Hormone Kills. Please come out in your evening wear look. The judges want to talk to you. focus, right? So, your question this evening is how has drag changed how you handle things in the rest of your life? I'll repeat. How has drag changed how you handle things in the rest of your life? Drag has honestly changed a lot of my life. I never really, I never really thought about my actions, and then I became a drag queen, and then I realized how much people look up to my actions and what I say and what... Oh, I'm sorry, that was really quiet. Um, but, um, it's really changed a lot of my life just because I can see other people struggle in the beginning where I was and I want to help them just as much as I wanted help and I got help and I was able to get all the help that I needed and it just, it's really changed my life. <laughs> Pheromone kills! <laughs> Contestant number two, the marvelous Moby Dick! to Latrice, then she'll ask you your question. How about that? All right. Hi, how are you? I am wonderful. I'm not using those. Uh, I have one. Oh. Uh, I'm kind of off script. I like a little ad yeah. lib. Yeah. Um, your question is, mm -hmm. if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what misconceptions would you clear up about drag kings? Yay! Oh. 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 I'll, 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 I'll repeat it. If you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what misconceptions would you clear up about drag kings? All right. So I'd probably touch on gender identity. We're not all femmes. We're not all lesbians. We're not all non-binary. We're not all trans. But we are people and we all are valid. Oh, I got little jitters in my heart just then. That was beautiful. The Marvelous Moby Dick! Contestants number three, Dana Hart. Hello. <laughs> so I'm so nervous, so let's get up there. Hi, Lucas. Hi. How are you? I'm well. Awesome. Well, I think he's going to ask questions, though. Okay, <clears throat> I am losing my voice right now, but um, what is the best lesson you have learned about yourself from the beginning to the end of this competition? Wow. Um, I would say from the beginning to the end, just be open, be you, show sides that we never showed before, try and be yourself. Because competition's hard. I wait with doing drag for a year, so it's hard for me too, because I'm a newbie. And back to the bunch of veterans. So I would honestly just say, just be you. Just try to do your best. And if you think you did your best, then that's all you can do. Dana Hart! <laughs> Contestant number four, Francesca Dynamite. <laughs> Hi, Francesca. 
Francesca. Hi. How are you this evening? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Doing very well, eh? Um, <laughs> uh, what is the number one piece of advice that you would give someone considering doing drag for the first time? <laughs> Bring your interpreter. Would you like me to repeat the question? Okay. <laughs> I did for the other girl, I'm just giving the same consideration. Um, aside from the fact that we are very exposed uh, um, to social media, like group of things, but I guess the best thing that I could advise for the person that really wants to step into the craft is to get involved to the community. Because no matter how you learn the skills, if you don't get volunteered, you need to step out of your comfort zone and you need to learn from the legend. And then from then, you just learn the skills eventually. But you need to put yourself that the people know that you, you like what you are doing. You can just go to, oh, I want to be a drag queen because I saw this queen so beautiful. It, uh, it's a commitment because for me, being a drag, it is not just an art, but it is has a deep meaning to give respect to all the queens who stand before me before I was even born. They are the queen who speak for those people who can't speak and give their life and some of them some of them even died and never get a justice so it's it's a serious business for me to get involved in the community and participate thank you francesca dynamite contestant number five godiva You have vision in green. Seems to be the color I of you. See, you got good taste, gal. <laughs> or envy. Yeah. But all of it. I'm an envy of all of it. Um, I'm, well, again, gonna go off script because based off of me viewing you, I want to do something a little more personal. All right. I noticed that you um, are a comedy queen. Um, I want to know, do you feel that it's important to move people in a comedic way versus an emotional way. I'll say it again. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> do you? You're a comedy queen, and you, you, you. Do you feel that it's important to move people through comedy or through more of an emotional? I I go for both. I definitely. I subscribe to the uh, the way of the broad, so I'm definitely a Broadway queen, and um, sometimes that's comedy, and then sometimes that's a power ballad, and it's picking and choosing the audience, and yeah, I'm not going to come out here and do a death drop, and uh, knock your socks off with my crazy dancing abilities, but I want to emote and move people any which way I can, and using what talents I have, and that is engaging the audience and going from there. Good job, Contestant number six, Ivy Lee. But how are you two enjoying our lovely May snow? <laughs> Ridiculous! Right? It's supposed to be spring already! Well, well, usually it snows next weekend, so we're hoping that by enduring it this week, we get a week off on May long. So, I don't know. Woo! Uh -oh. I've eaten way too many McNuggets lately. This corset is really doing me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, go, <clears throat> I'm gonna go with something a little more serious. Uh, for you guys, the new year, we've kind of gone to a new government, very conservative. What type of role do you think, as a drag queen, you play in the community now that we're going to a bit more uh, conservative way of life over What role do drag queens have going into this conservative government? 
Well, as drag entertainers, throughout history, we have had the responsibility and the immense privilege to speak up for our less privileged siblings, haven't we? And it is no different now. We were so lucky to have a very progressive government for the last four years, and we basically got the Trump of Alberta elected. It's happening everywhere. It's happening in Europe. It's happening in North America. And drag queens have the responsibility to perform, brighten people's days, or use that power and that stage time to get political and to discuss things that will be heard by a large audience. So we are very, very responsible going forwards and empowering our community and making sure everyone feels welcome in this society. I appreciate the way their train is doing a better job of feeding the stage than my guy with the pro. Contestant number seven, Angelina Starchild. Hi. 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 I supposed to do that? You did. There's no supposed to. Okay. <laughs> Except you're supposed to answer this question. I guess you are supposed to do that. Oh, my thank you. Explain one thing that you admire in one of your competitors tonight. I'll repeat. <laughs> Nothing is the answer, right? Explain one thing that you admire in one of your competitors tonight. Okay, here we go. Um, so I have the absolute pleasure of working with um, Ivy League. Um, <laughs> back at uh, Greg's Benny, uh, I think it was a month ago. Um, <laughs> um, and she is so beyond nice, talented, supportive, like beautiful, perfect. Her hosting skills are amazing. You said one thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. My mouth kind Don't of went on and on and on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Angelina Starchild. That brings us to the intermission in tonight's show.